I've spent the past week casually streaming my adventures in Dragon Quest XI, clocking in over 30 hours so far, which any Dragon Quest veteran knows to mean that I've barely scratched the surface of the game. And I'm not going to let that stop me from making a video. So far, I'm completely in love with the experience. Leading up to the game's release, I had managed to avoid all trailers and pre-release reviews. There was a hairy day on Twitter when the embargo broke and everyone was retweeting minor spoilers, but I managed to dive into the newest installment of my beloved Dragon Quest series with fresh eyes. I had seen the new characters, of course, yet I wasn't sure what to make of them based on design alone. They all appeared derivative of past heroes, and I was feeling a bit meh about the whole party. Until they spoke. Wow. Talk about shameless. Which is funny, because in Japan, the game contains zero voiceovers. And the imbued personality of the voice actors is precisely what won me over in the localization. Veronica's sassy stubbornness, Eric's dry sarcasm, and Slavando's fabulous enthusiasm wouldn't be half as impactful in text alone. Poor blimey, they're no Yangus, but this cast easily ranks among my favorite in the series. I haven't gotten far with the main plot. We have reached the time filler portion of the classic JRPG setup that has my party globetrotting around the world fetching orbs. I know that the silent protagonist is the chosen one, but he, like the story, have taken a backseat to the undeniable charm of the supporting characters. With a cast this likable, I don't care that the plot points are familiar and predictable. Every cutscene is an entertaining diversion from the grind of battle and exploration. But, as bright and cheery as my party is, the game has repeatedly delivered tragic gut punches right to the feels. If you're new to the series, don't be misled. Dragon Quest may look perky with his adorable smiling mascot, but Yuji Horii is a sadistic heartbreaker. Gameplay-wise, Eleven is everything I love about Dragon Quest. Nothing says adventure to me quite like casually roving the countryside battling whimsical monsters. The game's cel-shaded, illustrative aesthetic absolutely oozes with Toriyama's signature style. Early on, you'll run up against saber cubs, an adorable kitten enemies that flop over a mule when they die. I was personally torn between battling them, because their animations are so freaking cute, and not battling them because hurting them made me feel like the monster. Trolls make a familiar return, I love when they lose their footing and land flat on their backs. It's an animation I've seen a hundred times, but it never fails to elicit a giggle. The bosses have, so far, all been huge, colorful creatures, each more fantastic than the last. And despite their friendly demeanor, they're starting to get nasty. I died twice against an asshole spider monster before finally stumbling on the right strategy to scrape through the encounter. Which is also very Dragon Quest. The battle system gives the player complete tactical control. You choose who fights, which weapons they favor, which skills they learn, and if your choices aren't working out, you can swap everything mid-battle and try something new. The system is flexible, and I love it. Each character can specialize in one or more of select weapon types. These weapons each have pros and cons. Eric my Thief, for example, can either use boomerangs to hit all enemies for less damage, or knives for harder hitting single enemy attacks. You can focus on developing his critical hit percentage for infrequent massive damage boosts, or bolster his deafness and dedicate his time to pickpocketing crafting components from enemies. There's no wrong approach. Different builds are better suited for different needs and it's up to the player to decide how to best use the tools available. The pep system is new to this particular game. Each time your character gets hit, they have a chance of going into a pep stance, with their odds of peppiness increasing with each subsequent blow. Pep characters have heightened stats and deal a bit more damage, but more exciting, they unlock powerful pep powers, some of which require multiple pepped characters to use. Because all this is random and infrequent, the pep system is less useful than the tension abilities from Dragon Quest VIII, but you also don't have to waste a bunch of turns doing nothing in order to pep up either. Instead of being something that you can count on, other than counting on the bosses to go pepped and kick your butt, the system is more like a fun reward that shakes up the monotony of your current battle routine. The only downside is the game's penchant to request that you pull off specific pep powers against particular enemies as a quest objective. Because of the whole randomness of the system, it can take multiple battles to synchronize your pep team, and it's just annoying. On the other hand, it's totally possible to pep up characters against trash mobs, toss them into your reserve party, and bust them out again in a boss fight. I told you, Dragon Quest was all about the strategy. I also love the new improvements to the formula. Every save file resumes with a quick recap of your current adventure, a feature sorely needed by every long-form RPG ever. 
No longer shall we be forced to abandon our quest upon forgetting where to go after an extended gaming pause. Serial television has had previously on introductions for decades, and now so do JRPGs. I just hope this is a feature that becomes commonplace in the genre. And it's such a little improvement. But that's what Dragon Quest XI is, a very traditional JRPG with a few slight modernizations, like jumping. In a JRPG, I can finally vault over minor environmental obstacles, but not all of them, which is actually a little weird. There's no visual indicator of which ledges are jumpable, so occasionally you'll be awkwardly jumping around testing your boundaries, and sometimes you'll miss out-of-the-way chests because necessity to jump is so infrequent that you'll forget it's even possible until you go to mount your horse and hit the wrong button. Which, by the way, yeah, mounts are a thing. The horse is a nice feature. Scattered around the overworld are these bell stations you can ring to summon a horse, which is great because it really speeds up travel time, especially in the hours before you learn the fast travel zoom spell. But again, it's a little awkward. If you play anything like me, you'll already be halfway down the path before you remember the horse and then have to double back just to summon him. I wish I could whistle instead and have the horse come to me. But in addition to horses, the game also includes monster mounts, which are ridiculously fun to ride. You'll occasionally run into enemies surrounded by gold sparkles, and these baddies are yours to control after defeating them in battle. Monster mounts have special abilities which are useful, and sometimes necessary for exploring dungeons. Skeleton spiders can climb up walls, hornets can fly over water, and mechanical eggs can jump higher than the hero. So if you're in a dungeon and you see a chest you can't reach, just look around for the nearest gold sparkly. Chances are you just need a helping, uh... Claw. But the most fun I've had with the game has been with the crafting system. I don't know what it says about me that I avoid all monsters on the map as I zip between sparkly harvest points. I reserve my grinding for big mobs that are more likely to carry valuable crafting components and refuse to wear naught but crafted equipment. Especially if said equipment changes my character's physical appearance. I'm a sucker for cute costumes, to the point that I carry around tougher utilitarian armor solely for boss encounters. But when you can swap equipment mid-battle, why not? I love collecting recipes and hunting down every NPC, red book, and breakable barrel in existence that's become a greater mission to me than what I assume will ultimately turn out to be a quest to save the world from some jerkwad wizard dragon. If you're not currently playing Dragon Quest XI, what's wrong with you? It's a fantastic and addictive throwback to the great RPGs of yesteryear, and sure to be hallowed as a new classic in its own right.